This digital clock here is the last and largest of the eight digital clocks that I bought off of the same seller back in 2019. You can see it's an analog style clock and also that it's quite reflective which makes it a little bit annoying to film. Even with turning off all the lights in here except for the overhead light, there's still quite a bit of glare off the front, but I did the best I could. Honestly, I think this clock might look better without this piece of plastic in the front, although that would leave the LEDs vulnerable to getting uh, poked by curious fingers. The back of the clock is transparent, which is pretty cool. Let's you see the works. Although they are a little bit crude, because this clock was apparently the prototype for a group of several of these produced by the original builder. They seem to have made some changes after they laid out the circuit board. This little uh, circuit board here was tacked on. It's for the TikTok control. Just produces a little uh, ticking sound every second. You can see the holes are just kind of randomly drilled there. That was done by the original builder, as was putting tape over them, presumably to reduce the volume. The speaker was loose in the case when I got it, so I had to you know, reattach it and I uh, did so with hot glue. The little TikTok circuit board was also loose in the case when I got it, so I ended up gluing it down to the clamp that holds the filter capacitor, which I also replaced. This is the original one. It's a big 4900 micro at 20 volt cap. This thing just kind of uses brute force filtering with the uh, 7805 regulator. You can see that was kind of uh, tack soldered in place there. I redid those connections to make it a little bit more sturdy. It runs quite hot. Uh, I measured 130 degrees Fahrenheit there. Not enough to destroy that thing, but definitely hotter than I would like. I also changed out that capacitor there. I haven't shown all eight clocks yet. I will get to the rest of them. But this was the last one that needed fixing, and it actually didn't need that much work. I only put maybe two or so hours into it, maybe three. These two transistors here were just kind of tack soldered onto the stumps of some prior transistors that had been cut off. Maybe they decided to switch to a different type. But I uh, redid those connections. Each one of them had a single connection broken loose. So now all three leads are reattached and it works. Uh, one of the wires was broken loose. It went to the zero control. And the LED in the front here, which just kind of is a decorative item, doesn't really do anything, uh, had come loose and was floating around in there. So I had to take it fully apart to re-glue that, but it did let me get some good pictures of the wiring for the LEDs, which I will add to the video. Now this clock uses all 7400 series logic gates, so they draw quite a bit of power. This thing pulls about 10 watts, which is why that regulator runs hot and why the bridge rectifier also has a heat sink on it. He did fuse the clock on both the primary and secondary side of the transformer, which is nice. I would have definitely added at least a primary fuse if there wasn't one already, because I don't really trust all this wiring here and how loosely some components are mounted. I did redo the kind of dodgy solder joints though that I noticed, but there's maybe others I didn't, because I didn't look at the underside of the circuit board there. Now for the rest of the controls on the back, which are still labeled with the original builder's handwriting. We've got the zero seconds control, we've got the hold slash set control, then the fast set and slow set switches. First things first, the zero control just brings these seconds up to the top there. And I did see it advance the minute as well when it hit the top. And it looks like it doesn't do that repeatedly. Yep. Yeah. It actually does. Interesting. Good to know. It's actually advancing at more than one minute if I flick the control quickly. So something to be careful with. It maybe needs some debouncing. Let me show you the rest of the controls. So this is the hold control. It just stops the seconds wherever they are and releasing it will let them advance. Now the two set controls don't do anything unless the hold control is also set. Now I'll put the hold control on which stop the seconds down there and I'll flick the set switch that's the fast set, so you can see the minutes are rapidly advancing along with the hours and then the slow set here which is slowly advancing the minutes. Now you probably notice that there's more than 12 LEDs in the inner ring here. That's kind of unusual. 
This is the only analog style digital clock I've seen that has more than 12 LEDs for the hours indication. Now the currently displayed time is 9.59, which is a little bit confusing to someone that's used to digital clocks, not analog ones. When I advance the minutes past the top of the hour, it'll move up to the next half hour mark. So now the time is 10.01. For people that are used to analog clocks, this is probably a more logical system, but I am more used to digital clocks. I stopped it at just the right time for what I want to show. When the minutes cross from 29 to 30, the hours indication will move up to the next hour. See there it went up to uh, 11 o'clock. The other two analog style clocks I have just show the current hour at all times with the uh, hours LED. And this one's more like a real analog clock where as you get closer to the top of the hour it moves very close to uh, indicating the next hour. So I'll just move it up again. There you go. The finish is a little bit worse for wear but it's not too bad. So all in all this is a pretty interesting clock in my opinion. I'm not sure how much the original builder used it. They made another one of these that they actually built into a wall of the house so this thing may have been packed away most of the time being the prototype. Well I hope you all have a happy Mother's Day. Thanks for watching.